So after collecting feedback from the users that were doing my beta testing, I got quite a bit of feedback about confusion in the app and all of that kind of stems back to the design of the app. So for instance, there was a lot of confusion around how to actually save or add savings to your trip. So the way that the card was set up for that, it was kind of confusing to people. It was also not that straightforward of what it meant to have multiple trips. So there was a lot of issues and they all kind of stem back to the design of the app. So basically what I did was I re did the whole user experience in terms of the the design and the layout of the app. So what I want to show you now is all the things I've changed based on the feedback I got from the beta testers and some of this stuff was already kind of planned. I did want to have a more polished uh, user experience and a more polished design to the app. So that was it wasn't like the beta testers kind of made me realize that the app was poorly designed, but they definitely gave me a lot of good tips on what parts of the app were poorly designed. So for instance, this page here is pretty straightforward. I mean, you don't really, you know what you need to do here. There's nothing that actually changed. I did change the fonts of the whole app to just be this one cleaner font. And then the color is now this darker color, blue, this bluish uh, purple color. So that got changed, but you can see if you hit get started, these are basically the same as well. And the language here is also the same. Um, I'm just gonna not create an account for either of these because it will be a bit quicker. So you can see right here, this is a, a big difference on the app right here. So initially we had this whole page where it had that nice animation and it was prompting you to create your first trip. Now it's just, much simpler there's nothing you can do but start searching for your trip so you can see in this one there was a plus button here you could click which would bring you to this page also clicking the start button would have brought you to that page and you could go to this past trips page which this is confusing because since you don't have any trips you can't search anything and then you can add here which would then bring you essentially back to this page so that's confusing as well the profile is not necessary to be accessed at this point because there's nothing really there. So yeah, back on this homepage, that animation was nice, but we're going with a whole different style of the app too. These colors are all gonna be different and we're gonna be going with a more white and blue kind of color style, a more mono color. So there's not gonna be a lot of color variation in the app. So anyway, when we go through starting the trip, if we go to Italy, you can even see here the list here of results. I mean, the average budget was kind of placeholder text, so that was expected to be changed anyway. But you can see the list of results. This isn't too bad. I mean, it's pretty obvious what this is. It's a search there. Um, and you click in and you get to that page. So if we do the same thing on this version of the app, the search is just a little different in color, but generally it's the same thing. Since we're not going to have that feature of having the average budget in our first version of the app, that has just been removed. But if you click it, these, this functionality is generally the same. Uh, you can see this is all generally the same here as well. Just this one looks a little bit nicer. In my opinion, it's a little bit cleaner looking. Changing the date range, same concept here. Really, it's just a change in color. So we'll just leave those as it is and hit continue on both of those. So this is a main difference on this version of the app. When you hit, when you hit continue there, you kind of lost all the information that you already filled out. So you kind of like, you no longer know the country or the location and you no longer know the dates, which you just set. So this version of the app makes that simpler because you now can see that stuff. And in this version of the app, we also had the ability to build a budget. It turns out this ended up being very confusing for people and no one, no one really understood what this feature was. I think there's room for improvement in that in the future and kind of making it more transparent of what that means and basically how you can kind of say you want, you know, $10 a day to go towards transportation and $30 to go towards food and so on with all these categories. But I don't think people really think think like that when they are budgeting, especially when they're trying to plan a budget. So 
this kind of just became confusing and didn't really didn't really actually serve a purpose so because of that this whole feature has been removed so we're only going to be collecting uh one amount and it's going to be the daily trips budget so if we go with 50 and you can already see how confusing this is i myself just got slightly confused here build budget and continue these buttons are too similar that you don't even know necessarily which one to click immediately you have to actually read it whereas this one it's the only button that's there so it's obvious that this is the button you're going to be clicking this page you can see very similar in style same thing though it just has all the information that you've already filled out and while this one does have that it's just in a better more familiar design because you're familiar with this at this point now because it is the same card that's been going through and you can see all that changes is the budget and even when you go back now the budget will be there because it is actually the same card um, but this is essentially the same when you click on that it'll do the same thing then the ad pops up on both so that is the same but this is where a big core difference has happened now so this main screen is massively different in the old version this is what this was very confusing to people adding the money here now the buttons we had set up where you can just click it and you could do you know add 25 dollars saved but this subtraction part was confusing because what you have to do is type in 25 and then subtract it so that's no longer the way that you enter savings uh, the way you enter savings now is to click this save button and you can see that this simple calculator comes up. So if you want to put in $25, now you have the option to either say that you saved that much or you spent that much. And if you try and say that you spent it, nothing will happen because you didn't actually save anything yet. But now you can say you have it saved and, and you can see it has it right up here. Immediately, you know how much you've saved. Whereas with this one, it's, it is there, you know, but there's two numbers here, which gets a little bit confusing, potentially. Um, so also the color scheme of this, which was always planned to be changed, is different. And you can see it's just nicer to have the image there and all this information. It's just a much cleaner design. So another major difference is in this old version, we had everything kind of stored on this trip's detail page. So with this new version, Another major change is you're only going to be able to have one trip per account. So this is something that I decided to do just for version one. A user can just have one trip and I'm thinking for a version two that will deploy quickly after the version one is will allow potentially a paid version where you can have more than one trip. So I'm thinking we can add an in-app purchase that maybe is a certain flat rate or maybe a subscription and then you can have as many trips as you want. But that I think is gonna be the way that this app can still be free. And then we can potentially make more money on it for people that wanna use it to the next level. You can see a lot of the stuff that we had on this trip detail page has been moved to this home page. So a lot of the logic is the same. So, you know, the days till your trip is now this card and then current daily budget. I don't even know that we that we had that but this number now is based on what you've saved divided by the amount of days your trip is so right now with 25 dollars for this distance of a trip for this length of a trip i would have a three dollar day budget um, you can see also there's some better graphs kind of displaying what you've saved versus what you needed whereas in this version we kind of just had the number here so this is more visual as well as with the numbers there and then the transport type is is just there. I mean, that I don't even think is on this page, but that is there as well as this nicer percent saved view of, you can see, you know, you have 7% saved. I definitely think it displays the data a little bit more friendly and, a, and in a way that is easier to see at a glance what you have. Uh, notes is essentially the same. It still just pops up and you could type things in. So that's not much different, just color changes, but generally that's the same. So that's basically the home page there. And that really is going to be the, the MVP, the version one of this app. It's just going to be a very simple, you can just, you know, type in how much you've saved and that's it. So it's really just a calculator that's getting you towards that goal 
of your $350 total budget for this trip. Lastly is this profile page, which has changed a little bit as well. Uh, you'll see this is where the ad is. So I decided also that I don't want the app to have ads on that main page at all. So I'm really only gonna put a banner ad on this profile page because I don't really think anyone's even, I mean, it's there, it's there to potentially make some revenue, but I don't think, I don't want, I don't want this main page to be filled with ads is kind of the point of it. Maybe I'll put one down at the bottom here. I've kind of thought about that, but but I think it does take away from the experience, especially since the app has so little features right now that it kind of, to me, seems seems like a money grab to put ads on this simple of an app. But that's up to you if you want to if you want to put ads in where you want to put them. But uh, you can see the profile is not too much different. It's basically actually very much the same in terms of the information it has, but um, like editing your profile where you can add your home country, that's still there. And probably will make these profiles a little bit more robust in later versions, but that's basically the same. The whole sign in to save your data, that thing is exactly the same as well. So let me do a test account. And actually it's looking like this is not refreshing as it should, so that's something I will have to update still, but I think probably if you go back to it, now it's refreshed there. You can see you can delete the trip here. This is kind of the workaround from having multiple trips. You can just delete this trip if you want and then create another trip. But the account the account as a whole can only hold one trip at a time right now. That is the major differences of this app now. As you can see, it looks nothing like it used to. I will say I do want the app to be more robust, obviously, and have more features, but I felt like I was getting to a point where I was spending more time more time trying to add these features and doing it poorly than I was getting the app to a point where I can deploy it. So uh, so about a month ago, I kind of made the decision that I just want to get this app deployed. I needed to get it to that minimum viable product so that I could deploy something. And then once that's deployed, I can now start adding features more slowly. But for instance, if I make if I make this app live, and then for instance, we add a feature for a new tile here. We can add that feature and then deploy that version. So that could be a version, you know, 1.1. And then those larger features that we've talked about or that I've talked about that I want to add into this app where it's more, it gives you more data on the trip. It gives you more predictions on what you should be saving. There's a lot of features obviously that can be added to this app to make it better. I think at this point, the app is very simple, but it does have enough, it has just enough right now that it can be deployed. So in the next few videos, I will be going over actually step-by-step -step how to set this layout up. I will be basing it off of what we already have set up, but it will be essentially building the layout from scratch. So if you're interested in seeing those, go ahead and subscribe down below. All right, ciao for now.